what we're doing is we're taking um, a mannequin skeleton, this mannequin skeleton, which is a humanoid skeleton that has this uh, set of bones, and we're trying to get um, the animations from the default templates to play with our character, which is uh, using a Mixmo rig, and that has um, a different bone naming convention and different orientations and all that kind of stuff. So the orientations are usually the reason that this is a major sticking point. You might wonder why you might just not rename them. Well, it's because even if you did rename them, the orientations would still be wrong and you wouldn't be able to do a whole lot. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to export this so that it can go into um, the same position as this mannequin. Um, and use its animations. But before we do that, we've got to make a root bone. So I'm in the riggings option. Um, I'm going to go to skeleton create joints. In older versions of Maya, it might be the animation tab. Um, but I'm just going to click a, anywhere here to create a joint. And I'm going to go and type in 0, 0, 0 in the coordinate grid uh, to place it directly in the center. Um, and I'm going to call this bone root. Then I'm going to select my hips and control select the root and hit the P key on the keyboard. Um, and that will parent the rig to the root. Um, now that's important because you need to have a root bone to get the proper translation and position of characters in Unreal Engine. So I'm going to go ahead and select the skin and the root. Go to File, Export Selection. And I want to make sure I have smoothing groups turned on animation turned on and it baked animation will be turned off and then for the uh, deformed models I'm going to have skin and blend shapes uh, but then I'm going to save this as Emily skin FBX so I'm going to go ahead and jump into Unreal Engine um, and I need to create a folder where I can stick Emily so I'm going to in the content directory I'm going to select new folder I'm going to call that Emily, and I'm just going to drop that into the top level. Um, I think. Looks like I actually get rid of it. Just a second. I'll just call that Emily, and there we go. That should be fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop Emily into that folder. And I'm not worried about textures or anything like that right now. Um, but so I'm going to import a skeletal. I'm going to import the mesh. And then I'm going to expand the options. And I'm going to select Update Skeleton Reference Pose. And I'm going to use T0 as, as ref pose. Basically, that's just time 0 in the coordinate space is going to be the reference pose uh, for the bind pose. Um, and so then I'm going to go ahead and hit Import. And then uh, what I need to do here is I need to create a retarget for both the uh, mannequin and for Emily. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mesh for the mannequin. I'm going to switch to the skeleton tab. And then I'm going to go to the retarget manager. And under the setup rig, I'm going to change the rig from none to humanoid. Um, and because the bone names are all correct, um, it'll automatically assign all of these uh, bone names for the, um, the humanoid rig. Um, and then so all I have to do is hit save pose, and I, I should be fine. Um, so then I'm going to go into Emily. I'm going to double click on her, switch to the skeleton tab, and I'm going to go to the retarget. Um, but just to, to quickly explain something that we're going to have to do, um, Emily actually is in a slightly different pose than the, um, the reference pose. So what we want to do is we want to, before we do that um, retargeting, we're actually going to set her up so that um, the pose is being used for this. Um, so. What I can do is uh, I know that I'm going to want to rotate her arms about 20 degrees. And I know that I'm going to want to rotate her legs 
about five degrees. Um, but it, the default snapping is 10 degrees, so I can click on the snapping options in the viewport, switch it to five degrees. Um, and then I want to rotate each of her legs out so that they are five degrees out from where they were. And then I can also, um, just to, to make sure that she's in the right position, I can drag the hips down so that her feet are planted on the floor. Um, and then in the retarget manager, I can hit save pose. And then if I go to view pose, you'll notice that she's actually standing in that correct pose. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the rig, select a humanoid rig, and you'll notice that two of the bones are actually assigned, the root and the head, because they were the right names. But the rest of them, we have to find the bones that were connected for that. Um, so in this case, uh, spine one is just spine, spine two is spine one, and spine three is spine two. So um, clavicle is left shoulder. Upper arm is left arm, lower arm is left forearm. Um, if you want to have all of the bones available to you, you can click the show advanced, um, and that'll give you all the bones, including the, the finger bones and advanced bones, custom bones and IK bones. Um, but we don't want to worry about that for right now because this is just for a demonstration. But for your final uh, character, you'd probably want to do that. So I'm just going to quickly go through and assign these. Uh, this is something that I really don't like in Unreal Engine. I really wish this were a process that could get automated by something other than the actual naming. Um, Unity uses the... Um, oops, I got that one wrong. Unity uses a combination of the hierarchy and the uh, bone names to get kind of like a heuristic, whereas um, Unreal only looks at exact names. So for example, even though neck01 has a bone called neck, um, it wouldn't find it because it, didn't, it wasn't neck01. Um, left thigh, left calf, left foot, right thigh, right Calf, right foot, and then then we should be in good shape. Um, so okay, now that we've done that, um, we're most of the way there, but we still need to actually retarget the animations. And rather than retargeting the animations, the easiest way to do it in this case, because we already have a finished animation blueprint, is to just retarget the animation blueprint. So if you retarget an animation blueprint, it will also create copies that are retargeted of all of the animation sequences and blend spaces that you have in that blueprint. Um, if you retarget an animation uh, blend space, then it will retarget the blend space and all of the animations that are connected to that blend space. Um, and since we already have a character that's functioning here, we want to just retarget the blueprint. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to retarget the animation blueprints, duplicate animation blueprints, and retarget. Um, and then it says we need to select the skeleton, so I'm going to select Emily. She's a little bit taller, but it looks like she's mostly in almost exactly the same pose as the character. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select And then uh, what you'll notice in the Emily folder is that we have all these new animations, the animation blueprint, and the uh, third-person idle 2D uh, blend space. Um, so then what we want to do is we want to click on the character here, and in the details panel, go to edit blueprint, open blueprint editor. Um, and then we want to switch to the viewport, and we'll see the character idling here. Um, so if I click on the actual character mesh, what I want to do is select Emily in the project and then hit the arrow next to the skeletal mesh. Then in the animation blueprint here at the top, I can either do the same thing, select the blueprint and then hit the, uh, the arrow, or I can do the, um, the drop down and select it that way. Um, but you'll also notice one other thing, um, which is that 
the animations on her character are slightly incorrect. Um, and that's because the character needs to have the skeleton retargeted properly. Um, and so the way that we do this is we go into the advanced options of the skeleton um, and we make sure that it is um, changing the, the hierarchy so that all of these are functioning correctly. So, um, so in, the, in the end result is we'll have this, uh, this blueprint working correctly. So, um, so you would basically go into your skeleton, um, show advanced options, um, and what you want to do is select the root and go to right click recursively set translation retargeting skeleton. Um, and then you want to change the root to animation scaled and then the uh, hips you want to change to animation. And then if we take a look at the animation blueprint, um, we'll notice that the animations actually play look like they're playing much better now and there, there aren't any weird artifacts or errors there. Um, so then actually we should be done now. Um, all we really need to do from that point is just go ahead and play and make sure that the character is running correctly. Um, and uh, so that looks like it's mostly correct. Um, the only thing that I notice here is that actually it looks like her feet are slightly falling through the floor. Um, so we actually probably didn't need to make the adjustment to the height of the character. Um, but that just depends on what the uh, content is for your project. Um, so yeah, basically that's all you need to do to set up a retargeting uh, for a character that does not have the same uh, phone names and orientations. Um, this works for humanoid characters, so characters that actually have um, a human bone shape. Um, but yeah, so that um, should help you get set up in doing a retargeting um, for a character that you brought out of Mixemo or somewhere else. Um, this is really uh, not that difficult. You just have to be careful and make sure you follow the kind of steps that I illustrated here and you should be good. All right, thanks.